This is Janta Television and you are watching The View. Welcome to The View. Namaste, I am Arun Dev Joshi. Today we have a guest from Bangladesh. We will be talking about the South Asian politics, about the politics in Bangladesh, Nepal-Bangladesh relationship. We have with, with us Shushanto Kumar Das, Politburo member of Workers' Party of Bangladesh. Shushanto, you are welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And I want to convey my thanks on behalf of my party and people of Bangladesh to Janata Television also and you and to the people of Nepal. Okay, thank you. And how long have you been in Kathmandu this time? Uh, I'll be um, four days. I'll be here for four days. So I'll any be leaving. specific region you came over here? Yes, I have come here for uh, making some preparatory works for modern boundary schools of South Asia. That is very important school, political school you see for South Asian progressive people. Okay, what actually is this Madan Bhandari School of South Asia? Actually, the uh, basic curriculum is to study the history of South Asia and uh, historical materialism in relation to South Asia and basic uh, understanding of Marxism, uh, dialectical materialism, historical materialism and uh, dialectics of nature and uh, some other uh, things related with the uh, progressive movement in this South Asia region and some present and past things to be addressed actually for the future to go ahead. Okay, will it be the academic course or you'll be, uh, you will give me some, some kind of degree or? Uh, no degree, it is academic. Uh, it is one kind of academic courses because you know Marxism is not only to have uh, that is intellectual or theoretical knowledge, we have to go to the praxis also. Yeah. So, we are having the uh, combination of this praxis and uh, uh, theoretical aspect also. So, will it be a affiliated to some university or? Uh, no, still not now, but probably it will be in the future. There are so many examples in the world. There are some schools uh, like this, they are also affiliated uh, with some universities and they will actually rigorously um, teach some courses will, will, which will be affiliated with that. University. So, how long will be the courses over here? Uh, for this time, it will be for three weeks. Okay. And th this, is the pi this is the pilot project you see. And after that, there will be permanent place and permanent course, all these things. So, uh, with for three weeks, any specific qualification you need uh, to uh, uh, join? Basically, the uh, there should uh, have some basic knowledge of Marxism and some experience in active works in uh, parties or progressive movements and uh, he has to know, uh, must have some language knowing that is English, he has to uh, actually has to be accustomed with English. So, any, any, quota, any quotas for this all the South Eastern region? Yes, uh, most of the students will be coming from uh, Nepal, nearly uh, student, 20 of the students from Nepal, uh, 10 from Bangladesh. Uh, 10 to 12 from India, 5 from uh, Pakistan and uh, some other uh, countries from South Asia also. Okay, they all are in, in, in contact with you for the, uh, for the Not courses? Not me, or that, but there is authority, there is organization yes. committee that is CPP of that school. I am in the advisory board actually okay. to uh, make up the curriculums, to exchange our views, to make the, uh, probably I can take one class also. If okay, you will be also faculty over there? Yeah, faculty over there. If I get time, it, it is conditional. Okay, basically, uh, you said the dialectic mentalism and all this will be there. Uh, any uh, specific courses you have designed so far? Uh, yes, uh, I am interested to make the course on dialectics on nature, you see. You okay. see, I, I was a student of physics okay, yeah. and um, actually I taught in university for 26 years in that topic. Uh, not only that, as because dialectics of nature is very important for um, Marxist outlook, but it is uh, not well addressed by anybody. So, we are very eager to have good address on this topic in this course. Okay, and the industry will be based in Kathmandu, Nepal somewhere or Kathmandu? Uh, nearly, uh, nearby somewhere, nearby Kathmandu. Okay, and will it have branches in the other part of the uh, yes. South Asia? Yes, that will be in future. There is a, a good, if you can say it is ambitious, but 
still it is very uh, within their very good vision. Okay, it's quite seems to be quite a good initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, and going to your country about the, uh, your uh, your country and uh, your uh, politics over there, like uh, you you have been in the Workers Party of Bangladesh in a, uh, like a, a leftist party. So, wh what is the situation of left movement over there, like a uh, uh, communist communist party movement over there? Uh, you see, uh, if we uh, can see a mm, bit behind, you know, in seventy one we had the liberation movement and that is armed struggle we uh, went through uh, for 10 months and uh, some nationalist forces and the progressive forces we participated in that movement and we have got the actually uh, some uh, aspect of thing of uh, freedom fight so in our country uh, we people who are progressive we uphold the that spirit of liberation movement. You, you fight for freedom from the yes. Pakistan, from you, you are the East Pakistan and you became Bangladesh. Yes, yes, Bangladesh. And I was a freedom fighter and I was then university student and most of our uh, student friends of schools, colleges and universities, they participated in this uh, freedom fight, you see, and our peasants, our workers and the middle class, all these things, uh, most of the old people participate in uh, liberation movement. And uh, after that, after the assassination of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman in 1975, our country actually went uh, under the control of the rightist force and who are anti-liberation force. And through two decades, they, their concepts actually pervaded uh, into all spheres of life. And in 2001, actually who was against liberation force they went to the power along with uh, bangladesh national Part nationalist party that is bnp and that was a horrible thing from our part as because who actually humiliated our uh, flags they are hoisting flags in their cars okay do you you being hindu during that time there are lots of uh atrocity with the Hindus was also there, right? Uh, yes, we cannot say in that way Hindus. Mm -hmm. All the people of Bangladesh were actually uh, mm, tortured, they are killed, uh, everything they have done. That is completely one kind of genocide, you see, that happened in 1971. And that force who helped the uh, Pakistani Janta, military Janta at that time, they went to the power. And at that situation, our party actually uh, we realized if we uh, want to have the progressive port to go ahead, we need uh, some immunity, the, all the um, uh, left forces, all the democratic forces, all the nationalist forces, pro-liberation forces united. So from that standpoint, we make, uh, for, for the first days, we made 11 party alliance with yeah. left parties. With left along with? Uh, uh, with, with left, then with left. Only with left. But okay. when the situation become more critical, then we made 14 party alliance and at that point uh, some of our uh, left friends they actually uh, differed with our uh, opinion okay, like they communist, are, they, communist yes, party of bangladesh yes, and communist all party of bangladesh and some other left parties they are also our friends and still they are friends uh, but they were outside that 14 party alliance now the, with our league we are in the 14 party alliance and also we are in the we are participating also in uh, government also but now the situation is this, the whole nation is to some extent uh, mm, polarized in pro-liberation force and anti-liberation that is from rightist aspect of life. Okay, from our, our prospect, our point of view, we see that sometimes uh, our league is there, sometimes Bangladesh National Party is there. Yeah. They were quite, uh, uh, quite a shift of the power from every five years. Yeah. But uh, this time around, it's, uh, it's, it's a, uh, consecutive terms that yes. our league has been in yes. power. A 14 party alliance along yes. with our league, uh, led by our league. Our league is the biggest party now in yeah. that front. So, uh, at that juncture of history, we are in the position we still we think uh, if the rightist force and liberation force come to the power then so they are, they are they are in the coalition with bnp or they bnp are, and a, jamaat you okay. see there will be coalition there jamaat is coalition islami. with bnp and jamaat jamaat islami jamaat islami who are 
actually some of the leaders are already been tri tried in and hanged in uh, this period in this period so if they come to the power then there will be uh, politically that will be disaster in uh, the people's life and so we think we must have some broadest possible unity with uh, all liber uh, uh, pro liberation forces democratic forces uh, progressive forces that is our point yeah other, other left parties has also eight they party alliance some different uh, they have got some different yeah. attitude you see we have our party have actually three points uh, political uh, program one is broadest possible unity against the rightist force and the uh, and anti liberation force and imperialist intervention second we have got the uh, program of uh, unity and uh, understanding with the left forces and thirdly we must have some people's movement and people's force uh, uh, that means created which can be basis of all these movements that is our three point uh, political program we have taken in our 21 point program immediate program so is there any possibility in near future in bangladesh like all the leftist part leftist party coming along together and uh, making a third alliance or third force to come uh, to the power sometime i see uh, the possibility is always there but uh, it depends on the concrete situation if the rightist force uh, becomes weaker then the left force may make some third force you see but so long the potential threat of this rightist force and anti liberation forces are much in that case uh, we have to consider the broadest possible unity also but our main enemy is ultra rightist force and the imperialist forces so against that there should be some tactical line and we are eager to have broadest possible unity to all lefts and including our milik as because our milik actually declared their pro liberation forces they have got some limitation but uh, they are a pro liberation forces they tell them some uh, socialist forces historically there is a contradiction between anti liberation forces and our milik so they are declared and historically they are pro liberation forces in that case we uh, in this historical context we need some unity with them okay like uh, like i said that in in nepal also we we were alliance with the other forces uh, to fight with the autocratic ruler yeah, yeah. so yeah. Uh, maybe that kind of yes, situation that kind is there of situation. So yes that when, when you get rid of that that situation you can uh, like in nepal we have yes. a communist party government right now yeah. uh, we fought different at a different party but came together yeah after then hmm. so any inspiration do you get from nepal what, what yes, do you talk about the nepalese a, nepalese it politics it is a tremendous Uh, actual inspiration from uh, people of nepal and from progressive forces of nepal they have actually uh, created some history and uh, i am taking this privilege to uh, congratulate them on behalf of our party on behalf of our people uh, for their historical achievement what they have actually achieved uh, through this period and we wish they will be successful and their success will initiate some uh actual enhancement of the uh, progressive forces in south asia also it is always always after 70 years that first time the communist party of nepal was formed they were all breaking away and they came together like you say that in 70 years the soviet union collapsed in 70 days the peace commune collapsed yeah. but in th there's a positive side of 70 yeah. like after <laughs> 70 years we get win you died did over here yes uh, actually uh, the nepal has got some different kinds of experiences they have actually tremendous uh, mass movements events arms movement all these things and i think so far i can uh, gauge or i can have the knowledge uh, through the exchange of views with uh, leaders of uh, nepal communist party and others that they have got very good mass base as because even they have got uh the majority also in local government and that is very imp important thing and so people yeah, they are they, with they, they have they, they have their uh, they have their government in almost 6 6 6 out out of the okay. seven provinces as well. nearly two third majority yeah nearly two third more majority and yeah. from um, seven provinces over here they have the government in the okay. six of them right. that is a good important thing is this now uh, nepalese communist party has shown a uh, that spread the way for some new things uh, in communist movement all over the world global communist movement also and yeah they have got that different uh, experiences and they have actually uh, built some new example also uh, uh, 
that becomes in multi uh, party system they can go uh, to the power with people that yeah, is also a yeah, new experience yeah, it's the first, in communist first, movement first this is the first time first time in the world the majority yeah, government yeah. of the communist in, had come to power yeah. from this uh, democratic yes, way of uh, democratic elections way. Uh, democratic way. and they are to actually they are uh, facing some challenges no doubt but they are with the people and people are with them so uh, we think that is a new thing and uh, after collapsing uh, soviet union there was uh, a uh, you see propaganda from the imperialist forces West, from the yeah. capitalist forces there will be no hope of there is no hope of socialism there will be no socialism that the end of socialism all these kind of things but nepal has shown actually no so long communists are with the people people will actually with with the communist forces and this has been historically proved so what do you feel like uh, in every part of south asia you can say the rightist force are uprising all uh, like inside in you bangladesh see, even in india even uh, you cannot say about pakistan just right now but yeah. it's still uh, they are considered to be the rightist one and even in other parts of the uh, of, of the south asia and, and even in the world uh, even that in is, the world that is the important Europe. thing but but the nepal has been in the reverse reverse gear yes so what do you think uh, uh, what how could it have been possible or what do you think the seeing the uh, one thing is this actually the uh, communist movement or progressive movement in south asia one part some parts of uh, south asia you see in india there is uh, some negative uh, trend uh, in pakistan but still in the election also some progressive forces coming are elected that is also good sim yeah, in pakistan one of the communist yes. uh, one, one one communist leader yeah, is elected yes, over there elected that is also good symptom and you see uh, some uh, parties in Uh, Iraq also they have got some mm, yes uh, leftist star there yeah, quite, quite, quite a good number good number and so this is a signature all over the world that the communists are actually they are fighting back and uh, yes truly speaking in india in also potentially in bangladesh in pakistan rightist forces are so uh, strong and the ultra rightist force that is terrorist forces they are so strong in this region and the religious parties in the name of religion what they are actually going to do that is very negative aspect but still the people uh, we have got confidence on our people on the people of india and on people of uh, pakistan also they will fight back all these negative forces to have the uh, people's actually rules it will take time but uh, there is a hope we are actually apprehending uh, um, recently in different aspects of in different countries also you see in uh, europe there is a trend of coming uh, left forces in latin america i went uh, brazil uh, for 8 um, weeks um, and uh, i actually uh, wanted to study the whole situation in latin america but latin america also they are always commonly they are against any atrocity of uh, capitalism so that is a good scenario all over the world and uh, you have got you know uh, there is uh, a systemic crisis of the uh, neoliberal policy mm. of the capitalist forces all over the world even even in the usa there are situations yes. like bailouts over there yes yes everything for after 2008 there is a practically collapse of the capitalist system economic system and after that trying to revive but still they are in uh, crisis say they are trying to overcome their crisis through some wars through some local wars every many things they are doing and all over the world they are not the force on behalf of people they are they are they are always against the force of, against people yeah there is support yes. for the few people few yeah, few people yeah. with the money uh, and but uh, seeing the situation like in latin america and even in the mexico there's a yes mexico there, there, there is a come let's yeah. was over there so, so uh, you feel like the time of the lapse to revive yes, has come exactly, again exactly exactly you see uh, there was peri commune and after peri commune uh, it took uh, uh, some few decades mm. but uh, from my point if you want to i i want to say in that way the next decade is a decade of the uh, progressive people all over the world that is my prophecy i want to believe in that way as because whole situation is actually showing the path in that so way. you you see it that way Yes, I see in that way. I'm I'm very strongly seen that way. This But, next uh, decade is yeah. actually about the Bengali people. Bengali has considered a scholar scholar society, even uh, seeing the 
West Bengal in the India and here Bangladesh. So in West Bengal, they have been a Communist Party for more than 25 years. 32 the, years there. Yeah, actually. they were almost 32 years. But uh, in Bangladesh, the the uh, some kinds of uh, maybe some kind of influence of the West part of the Bengali community hasn't see, been seen so uh, influencing over actually, there. Actually, uh, it is uh, one kind of. Um, disappointing and so that the progressive force in uh, West Bengal that is now it is Bangla it is going to be Bangla uh, is disappointing for us but still the uh, stronghold of the left forces in West Bengal in Tripura they are very deep rooted we think they will come back and uh, if we uh, actually consider the total India there is there will be some kind of unity against this uh, regime that means uh, rightist uh, regime there will be some and uh, the left forces will play a good role there yeah singing in context of india there, there was about 60 seats <coughs> the leftist parties are yeah. over there cpi cpm and forward block this left alliance mm, but uh, they couldn't cash it out yeah uh, when jyoti basu was up, offered a prime minister's yeah. seat so what do you think it, it was a drawback for the South Asian politics? Actually, actually uh, it is their decision you see. They are independent party, they have got their concrete situation. It is very difficult to say from outside. But we hope that if would hap it would happen, then probably that would be uh, better for progressive force of India and South, uh, South Asia. Probably that is my... Uh, so maybe, maybe that would be the missed chance or it will come again uh, or near future or not, I don't uh, know. You see, uh, it is not a chance, it is historic events you see. There will be, uh, again there will be situation of historic event also. Nobody actually thought uh, regarding Nepal also, but the Nepal is completely changed country, changed. But it, it was like uh, once we made a minority government and it has a quite a good, good ex people had quite good experience about that minority government and that could have added up uh, to the situation like this today. So, uh, exactly, maybe, maybe exactly. that would have been better People's in India. People's experience well. is always very valuable, mm -hmm. you see. In uh, India also, they are going through some experiences through this regime, through these uh, uh, rulers. So, it will be, I think, the people will realize in what way they should probe. And people is the ultimate uh, actual authority to say what, what is to be done, you see. Yeah, now I'm um, uh, going to the, uh, now you have come to Nepal in this context, like there's lots of debate about the education system over here, <coughs> like uh, <coughs> debate about the medical colleges over here. And you are being the professor of the physics, so you, are, you, are, you, 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 are you are teaching in the university. What kind of uh, education system is there in Bangladesh? You see, uh, that is a very uh, crucial question, you see. Uh, we have got very uh, brilliant students, brilliant young people in our country, in all over Bangladesh, even from rural. I, I actually I came from very rural, very remote uh, rural area, and we have got so brilliant students over the history, uh, and we see we have got that potentially. Recently, and that is in math Olympiad, we have got our student has got the gold, and in uh, all other Olympiads they are having good results. That means we have got the uh, geniuses, no doubt. But we have got some limitation in, uh, as because I am, I want to say one thing, that means uh, that the question of budget. We have only 2 uh, point something uh, percent of uh, GDP in our budget for education. But I think this is very insufficient. If we can make it 4 or more than 4, that will help us, one. Second, uh, actually we have to uh, uh, select the teachers, proper teachers in all levels of education, in primary education and in uh, secondary education, in tertiary education, all over. All over the uh, countries, all the uh, strata of education, we must have some good teachers. And my point is this, uh, I uh, several times I even mentioned it to the ministry, education ministers and all those things, they are also my friends. Uh, that there should be some different scale so that the brightest people can come to this place and there should be no uh, that means uh, nepotism, favoritism, anything. They should be selected by their merits. 
if we can make this condition uh, fulfilled, then our uh, student will show their brilliance everywhere, anywhere. I have many students from Nepal also, they are my students, they are also very brilliant students. They went to my universities and I taught several students, still they are here and I am always um, very, um, they are very loving, you see they are very loving like my children. I think they are my children still. Um, so, uh, we have got that potentiality, but we need some very good planning, otherwise and the quality of education will fall down. And when this uh, debate came over here about the health system, health education, and Bangladesh was one of the reference, like lots of Nepalese people go to Bangladesh for the health education. And it is uh, during the debate, it is said like that we are not about to make our health education system like it is the Bangladesh do have, like uh, not a proper health education system over there. Uh, so, w what what do you think about that? It is Actually, there may be uh, in the difference in different medica medical uh, colleges also. You see, there are very good medical colleges in uh, our country also. There may be some uh, underrated medical colleges, no doubt. And all these kinds of, and we are aware of that. And I was, uh, when I was actually a syndicate member or academic council member, I fought several times so that uh, we can make our standard uh, uh, we can actually uh, continue our standard in that places as because medical science is very important as because they always treat with their lives. So, they have got no chance to make any mistake. So, in that case there may be some limitations and we have to look into it. And uh, I cannot say in that way what is happening, but I am still uh, very conservative that uh, in medical science and in every educational system, we have got no scope of any mistake, you see. Okay, like there, there have been now, there have been debate in Nepal like education and health system should not be in the hands of the private, private and it should be all nationalized, all the government should take care of all the education and all the health facilities. So, what do you think about that? Uh, uh, yes, that is a fundamental question. If we left forces go to the power uh, with the mandate of the people, then that will be our one of the uh, prior actually um, uh, our priorities, one of our priorities, so that we can make our education system uh, as much as possible nationalized. And we have to give enough support and enough fund for research, for uh, students, for their um, uh, residences, for the standard of their uh, that is establishment, all these things. That is a, that will be our uh, primary priority, you see. And uh, yes, we'll nationalize all those things. We'll take that responsibility to nationalize. So Basically, the that's, that is backbone of uh, education should be nationalized. So, what is it in Bangladesh? Most of them are national education institutes. Or uh, you see, our education now there are some private education also, and uh, there are a few uh, good uh, private universities are also there, but. Some universities are not uh, of, of that standard, we have to look into. And if that happens, and mostly now nearly 60% uh, of the higher education is being done in that private universities. And if it is not properly attended, then that, the, uh, that will be a great loss for us or for young generation. And it is a very critical situation. So, you are raising voice about that in your country? Yes, I am always raising voice and our party is always raising voice regarding this and several times our uh, president comrade Rashid Khan Menon uh, gave the uh, speech in uh, that is budget speech. He actually um, uh, claimed or demanded also he is uh, in the uh, government, but still he demanded some important issues like this. We must have some uh, special care for education and for budgeting and for everything. And uh, being a communist, being in an, 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 a communist party uh, so long and being visioning what the, the uh, power of the people would be, how the people would go uh, to the regime and how the people would, uh, people would be handling all the regime. And now uh, in Nepal, in Nepalese situation that the communist party has come to the power with uh, almost two thirds of majority and they have quite a bit of power uh, to do things as they wish to. 
So, seeing this situation, how do you how do you see Nepal? How in your vision, how Nepal should be in five years to come now? Um, what kind of I'm, uh, I'm progress very reforms hopeful, you do? see? I am very ho hopeful and uh, optimist regarding Nepal. I am looking through all the people. Uh, first of all, you see the freedom of women here. It is very outstanding. I am actually looking all those girls, those women. They are so free. They are doing, they are actually participating in education, in debates, in everything else. That is a very fundamental question. Secondly, the young generation, now the total young generation is with the progressive force. Mostly, they are with the progressive force. They are not in the reactionary forces, not with the reactionary forces. And that is a very tremendous potential force for the communist parties or communist forces or progressive forces here to handle with. And I am very optim optimistic within five years they will achieve something so that people will be with them. But we have to be very careful. There are so many parts all over the world. They can have money. They can have weapon. They have can everything conspiracy to actually um, uh, put down all those things progressive what is happening there here. So that is the thing we have to. So you tell something like this, uh, there could be some forces yes. that could be yes. jeopardizing the things. So you have, do you have any suggestions for the government? What, how, how should it take steps, like <laughs> being from your experiences? It is not possible. They are uh, so outstanding comrades are there in uh, all those uh, comrades are uh, nearly uh, my, of my age and they, are, have, they have got the uh, tremendous experience, uh, both theoretical and ex money practice. So uh, probably uh, they are enough to uh, find their own way, but we can actually wish as because their success will inspire our people also. That is the important thing what I want to mention. Okay, Susanto, we would like to be the inspiration for the world. So hopefully your wishes will come true. Yes, thank, thank you thank very you much. For your time. Uh, I again I want to uh, thank uh, you, the General Television, uh, to have the privilege to say something in front of your people, in front of everybody and on behalf of my country, on the people of my country, on behalf of my party and I, I want to convey my gratitude, I want to convey my thanks to everybody and great, great wishes for Nepali people. I uh, want to say it is one kind of second hope of mine. Thank you. Thank thanks you a lot. Yeah. Today with us was Susanto Kumar Das, Politburo member and the professor, Politburo members of a Workers Party of Bangladesh and professor of Silat University. Uh, Thank you for watching The View today. We'll be talking with another guest another day. Keep watching Janata Television. Thank you.